a Lady Wisdom Speaks documentary, Planning and Planting Tulips and Other Bulbs. Hello and welcome to Catherine's Garden. We are preparing for spring 2020. The transition into winter has truly begun. And when I went outside, I noticed that the frost had hit the garden. So that it was it's really a time for cleanup and planning and setting up the garden for its winter sleep. I am so excited about the tulips and the bulbs that I put in the ground. And just as a reminder to give me some more joy, let's go on down memory lane and kind of look at what it was. The first frost has hit the region, my zone six garden. My urban cottage garden is feeling the cold. However, looking at these tulips and the beautiful fresh blooms that happened last year inspires me to get out there and to prepare the garden for next year. There is still plenty to be done to stay connected to the garden and prepare for spring, especially if we want the garden to look fresh and beautiful like it did in the past years. I just can't sit back and watch and wait. I have to dream. I have to plan. I have to get out there and clean up this garden and get it ready for a wonderful season. Successive heavy frosts are coming and the plants are starting to die back. However, I am looking at the garden as a whole and thinking about how can I make it more exciting for next year. Planting bulbs is the way. Hello and welcome to Catherine's Garden. Now, I just wanted to show you what I had purchased, my um, bulb purchase so far for the fall. Uh, last year, these are the bulbs that I purchased from Costco. And these came out really, really well. I must say that this was the best. No, actually, these two. came out the, the best. And I'm gonna see if I can pull up some pictures of it so that you can see it. Uh, these were so glorious. I put these in the front garden and they looked so well. They, they uh, ended up really creamy and looking like the picture. And then these came out really fantastic. They're over where the coleus are. Um, and the uh, purple, let me see which one, this one here. Averon, Averon was so beautiful. It reminded me of um, uh, peonies. And then the purple lady, it's a very deep purpley color really really nice now this was good this one here was good over by the bunny area and I actually added that with the alliums the purple sensation alliums which I need to go and get another package of that for this year to add some more throughout the garden. And um, this was near the uh, pear tree. They didn't grow as well, it might be the soil, but these came out really nice. 
um, just just a beautiful beautiful tulip mistress so I think out of all of them this one did not do very well but all of the rest did fantastic and my alliums they were amazing so the problem with bulbs is that uh, to get a really good show in the spring you need to to plant fresh new bulbs and the bulbs came out I think this week or last week from Costco and I started buying them um, every time I would go to Costco I would pick up a bag and it's about 12 bucks pretty much 11 something and um, so this is what I have for this year um, I have this red and white striped I think that's so beautiful I love the red and white and then I have this one, which reminds me of this, which is, uh, that's Patriot and Infinity and Just Kiss the Mistress almost look the same, right? So I'm going, I have that as well. And then I decided to get this 50 Tulip Purple Lady Mix Melody, I think. I can't see it. You don't have on my glasses. But, um... I think that's a nice combination and I like that lavender purple that is in, included in that. I like that arrangement. And last year I also planted a lot of daffodils in the back. And that daffodil um, procession in the back border by the hydrangeas and I went and I got me this um, bag of daffodils and this is from Home Depot they are 45 daffodils so I'm gonna put that in the ground and they're early bloomer plant in fall for blooms early spring and these are the yellow trumpet the yellow trumpet um, daffodil. So I just wanted to update you on my bulb haul so far. This and these two. And what I did last year. I am gonna go back and make sure I get some allium um, because I love the purple sensation allium in the ground. It's really, let me. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I really like the purple sensation allium in the ground. I like how they, um, they just come pop up in the different beds and it almost looks like um, they jumped over into the next area. So I have them in different sections. I just wanna continue to add them uh, because they, they just, works so well with the tulips and all the other things and it makes the spring garden come alive um, it's really the purple alliums it's really great between um, right before the roses I would say right before the roses they just look fantastic so I really want to add some more purple alliums um, they also have the giants um, I'm not sure if I really need the giant the globe master um, I may try um, a bag of, of those as well uh, because they're really big. The spheres are huge and maybe I'll put that in the front garden. We'll see. Um, when I go back to Costco, we'll see what is best. But I want to make sure that my spring garden is alive and that there is a succession of bloom and that things are just happening because that's when I'm so hungry for color and the garden and when I look out especially when I see the daffodils and I see them out there and they're blooming 
and they're colorful. It gives me a lot of hope. I'll try and pick um, and get some of the pictures so that you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah. So this is it. Those yellow and pink tulips opened up and don't they look beautiful together. I actually like when the tulips are closed in like this. You get to feel the full effects of the color. The weather is kind of cool, so they're fresh because it just rained. And the ground is damp, so it really shows off the tulips and you get to see them. They almost look like eggs. I also have some daffodils back there. That's pretty much it. So if you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below. Are you preparing for fall? Are you getting your tulips together and your different bulbs? And what are you doing for spring? Are you preparing, thinking ahead? And if so, leave a comment down below. about to plant my bulbs yeah I just got um, not too long ago um, some new additions to my bulb collection here I bought these hyacinths 20 hyacinths fierce mix meglin I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right and then I also got 120 allium drumsticks and it's a little different from the purple sensation, which is more like this one here. But this one isn't purple sensation. This is the gladiator bulb, and it's much bigger than purple sensations, allium. And it, there's only, there are only six in this container. And here, though, the drumsticks are 120 alliums, and the bulbs are much more smaller. Um, the alliums will bloom late spring. The hy hyacinths will bloom mid-spring, to me more so um, early to mid-spring. And then of course I have my tulips here. Blooms mid-spring, and this is a 50 tulipa, purple lady mixed medlin. And then I have this one here, 50 Tulipa, Blooms, uh, Patriot, and uh, Infinity. And then one more bag over here. And this is um, Tulipa Happy Generation Bastong. Bastong. Bastogni. Something like that. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to plant these up because now is the time. Um, before it gets any later. So between today and in the next couple of days, I'm going to just really put them out there, plant these bulbs, and um, of course, just wait for the season to change. I also have daffodils, and that's what I'm going to plant today. And these are early bloomers. 
the daffodils plant in fall for blooms early spring mammoth sized bulbs produces classic yellow blooms and for stunning borders and cut flower arrangements in early spring so i do have uh, daffodils down in the area in which i'm going to be planting them and um, i'm going to add some more of these daffodils there in that area um, and just fyi i just wanted you to take a look at my tree yeah this is my tree that I've been um, admiring for so long that we're at the point now where just about all of the leaves have come off and so that's the end of that but instead I have the beauty of my wonderful angel trumpet tree that has opened up so many more blossoms isn't that beautiful absolutely gorgeous so I wanted to share that with you but if you look back there in the back bed um, right back here where the hydrangea blossoms are or hydrangea shrubs are I should say right there um, by the base I planted a lot of daffodils and I followed that all the way over and across so I'm going to continue that line there of daffodils now I don't know if I'm going to get all the way to this end here because I only have so many but I hope to fill in um, that back border with daffodils so that in the spring we will have spring color from the daffodils and um, I'm going to show you some of that so that you can see what I'm talking about and what happened last year. Um, my hope is to extend that border for uh, next spring. The hostas and the daffodils together are just so pretty. I really like how they're coming uh, along and this is what I saw also that the hosta leaves would um, eventually come up and overtake the daffodil leaves and that way they can really become established and I can maintain uh, the daffodils because the daffodils are going to have to dry up the, the leaves so that they can come back next year but I'm really satisfied with the way that these hydrangea leaves are coming forth it looks really good from every angle this border is shaping up nicely I really like how this is looking all right so here is the the bulbs I have these daffodils they're yellow trumpet daffodils and there are 45 in the package um, I've waited kind of late to actually plant the bulbs so I'm already experiencing some that are damaged but this one is a good bulb I don't know if you can see that yeah this bulb is pretty good and it's hard and it's firm whereas one of the other bulbs that I took out um, was soft and mushy so I'm going to take out the bulbs from the container here and uh, just kind of test them out and see which ones are good to plant and then we're going to go down and plant them and and put them before they are totally ruined and I have no bulbs at all. So we're going to kind of count through and see how many are halfway decent. Well, this one's a good one. So that's two. Let's see. That's no good. That's no good. Oh, my goodness. Seems like I really waited too late on a lot of them. It's not bad. No good. No good. Oh, my God. Well, 
I have these bulbs that are ready for planting that are not too soft. Because I delayed in planting the bulbs, um, I have 11 of them that are no good. Mm, they're in this bag here, but I have these here that I'm going to plant. And thankfully, um, it's not the full number. However, it's better than nothing at all. So let me get busy in planting. I'm going to try and extend the border. So from that tree all the way down to about right here are or should be daffodils from last year. So what I want to do is add from here on to a little bit past there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, really go the distance because of the amount of bulbs that I have. Um, I lost 11 of them because I delayed in planting the daffodils and I thought the area that I placed them was cold enough but it seems that it wasn't. So these are the bulbs that I'm left with. So I have about 34 bulbs here and um, I'm going to try and divide them up and, and put them through here. I think that what I'm going to do is uh, by groups of five here um, and that would give me what seven groupings so kind of divide this up so that I can, can extend to the end right there so let's see how this goes <laughs>
so I'm planting it right in here the bulbs and I did three to a hole all the way down to about where that glass thing is yeah and so I put three balls in I wasn't able to dig it deeply but I'm not too concerned because these are daffodils and the squirrels don't like daffodils so I'm really glad with this process I just wanted you to see to how the hydrangeas have feared back here so you know that I wanted to create the hedge of hydrangeas well now that the hostas have died back this is what it looks like and I actually got a bloom here see this got some blooms back here too yeah. and then here is my rhododendron who's doing pretty well here's the rhododendron here that I had planted from Lowe's summer of 2018 my hydrangeas these endless summer Nico blue hydrangeas were looking so fantastic and so I planted and propagated them I am in love with my hydrangea bush here this blue is so beautiful I think it's called Nico blue Nico blue hydrangea mop head hydrangea and it's just so so beautiful it started out like this with the white little traces of blue and then it became like this with the white and blue and then now it's this deep blue a deeper baby blue it's still a light blue but it's just a beautiful blue I just love it and of course that's what's in the back garden over there unfortunately for 2019 I had no blooms at all and the summer hydrangeas these here And here's another one. This is how big it's grown for the season. This is my rhododendron. Here is also a hydrangea, but this is not an endless summer one. And then let's take a look at these euonymus that I planted in. They seem to be faring well. And yeah, they're really in there. I'm just going to keep it in its little greenhouse there. Here's another one. And here's another one. This too is a hydrangea that I got from QVC. And um, it didn't flower, but it grew pretty well here. And then this is one of the little seedlings or plantings that I did um, a year ago. And it survived. So it's really good. Now, I don't know what these are. I have no idea what that is. But I do have my other rhododendron here. So I'm going to cut these back. Ugh. Yeah, here's the other roto. And then, of course, this is another hydrangea here. Somehow the bindweed has found its way back here. And wrapped itself around but this is a tough hydrangea plant and it seemed to have done very well here so that's pretty much it I believe that you know as time goes on these different blooms or hydrangeas will grow up and I believe that they will 
to come into nice strong bushes. I just have to be patient. What I do need to do to help my hydrangea hedge to be a little bit more stronger is to fertilize in the spring. Give them some fertilizer and a little extra TLC back here. So I'm, I'm pleased with it and hopefully that will allow them to bloom because last year they did not bloom. Um, I know there are other conditions too as well as the, the weather, you know, that is a factor as well. But I do want to get some blooms like this. For next year so we are hoping for the best all right so here I am in the front garden and I am going to plant these bulbs I'm going to plant the hyacinth bulbs here in the front on this side I'm also going to plant the hyacinth bulbs on this side too right around here so I'm going to have to move some things around and do it. But in the meantime, check out these chrysanthemums. They are looking so very sweet here in the front. It's looking really nice. So I'm happy to do this here and uh, get them in. Now we've done a lot of uh, cleanup. And um, I think with... Let me get started. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put the bulbs in, and it says here it blooms mid-spring, and um, the trending, let's see, we're supposed to place them in, bulbs should be planted before the ground freezes, and planting space is six inches plant depth about six inches so i'm going to try my best to get it in as deep as i can here okay so now i'm going to plant these bulbs here as well too i'm going to plant them in here i'm going to plant the bulbs here in this area as well there are some bulbs here from before and they're more so red and yellow um, in the front but I'm going to add these bulbs to this assortment here and it's going to be very colorful in the front Well, the weather continues to get progressively colder, but yet for some reason, these cosmos refuse to die and wither away. So it is making it so difficult for me to want to cut them down. However, it is time. And so I believe sometime this week or next week, I will be clearing away this area. But in the meantime, I am enjoying the changing of the leaf color and it's just beautiful i just love uh, this color and uh, the rest of the garden down the side border is doing pretty well i love the greenery from the arborvitae i was able to plant bulbs here um, so i will have some bulbs lining this side border and i'm excited about that also in the back, I planted some bulbs, some additional bulbs in that bed, and I have bulbs already in the back there, um, where the coleus were, and so hopefully they will come up. And then I planted some more bulbs here, so that I'd have a burst of color. Now that Jamaican hot pepper plant is still around, but um. The hostas are dying back, and I pretty much put some fresh bulbs right there in that area. I was able to pull up my begonia and save the bulbs, which is good. And speaking of the hydrangea bush, look at that. I just got that lone blue 
right there and a couple of others but hopefully next year that bush will bloom as beautiful as it did in 2018. I cut down the angel trumpet tree, pulled it up, and then this is the last of the hydrangea bush. This is bridal bouquet, and it was very nice. And the leaves are falling down from the trees, and we've been doing a lot of cleanup in the garden. Soon there won't be that many leaves on the trees. Maybe the oak leaves will be still there in November and into December. These alliums are definitely the largest allium bulbs that I've ever purchased. And you can see that they are just huge here. So this is the bottom where the roots are and then you plant it this way. So I'll be planting them in like this. Yeah, turning them around. And then in the back it says gladiator bulbs. Blooms late spring. Plant spacing 10 inches apart. Plant depth 5 inches. Height 60. Wow, this is going to be beautiful. So the gladiator bulb is right here in terms of height. And remember I planted the drumsticks there. Oh, let me see if I can see. And the purple sensation is right there. They're a little higher than the purple sensation, so that gives me an idea of how high it will go. And as I said, it's going to look really pretty with the iris. Yeah, it's going to look really, really pretty with my iris, and it's going to look pretty also with my lilac bush, the purple lilac bush in the front. And then I have those um, bachelor buttons. Yeah, the perennial bachelor buttons, which is also purple. So it's going to be a beautiful display in the front. This is my final bulb planting. I'm going to put this in here in the front border because I think that they will stand up tall and really look good with the lilac bush when it blooms in the spring. So my intention is to plant it somewhere in here. So that means that I'm going to have to move some of these dead, wilted <laughs> flowers that are no more and prepare at least a part of this bed for the spring. Well, I am excited about this because I am able now to dream about what can be. And um, I know that there are tulips down in here. Um, I didn't buy any new fresh tulips for this bed. So I'm hoping that the old tulips will come back. Um, if I find some bulbs, I will add them. There may be still at Costco or some of my, um, or maybe at the local garden center. There may be still some bulbs there that I can purchase and add to this bed. But we have to wait and see. I was able to clear away the dead flowers and cosmos plants and I was able to actually plant the alliums in the ground here and it looks kind of neat and ready for the new. I'm very excited about this. As you can see, I removed a lot of the dead and spent plants. And I left a lot of the roots in the ground to help support the soil. 
but still there's still more work to do and I'm excited about how the garden is shaping up but it's also good to continue to dream and to plant and to just work with it while we can. I planted my tulips and as I was looking at the packages and remembering what it was like I thought it would be nice to go down memory lane and remember the tulips of the past so come with me In early April, you will start to see the garden coming alive with green grass, different tulips starting to show their leaves, along with the daffodils, and it is promising. But I am longing to see the first spring tulips release their beautiful colors. Around the Easter season, the tulips in the front garden opened up. They looked like little Easter eggs on top of long green stems. They were so beautiful and colorful and pale and dainty, and they just brought so much joy to the area because as people walked by, they also admired the beautiful tulips in my garden. So this is it. Those yellow and pink tulips opened up and don't they look beautiful together I actually like when the tulips are closed in like this you get to feel the full effects of the color the weather is kind of cool so they're fresh because it just rained and the ground is damp so it really shows off the tulips and you get to see them they almost look like eggs I also have some daffodils back there. Under the tree, the pink and red tulips come together and they show off, as well as other tulips in the back garden.
these tulips were newly planted last year and they bloomed this spring, spring 2019. And it was so spectacular. The blooms lasted a very long time. I love the combination of the dark and light tulips together. And these particular tulips looked almost like peonies in the front garden. I was so amazed at their beauty. But these also deep color purple just contrasted so well. And then I also had some daffodils, some late blooming daffodils that joined this area. It was just a beautiful scene. I had just recently planted the coleus in the ground. And so the whole look was just spectacular. At least I think so. And it really made me happy for a late spring display. These particular tulips were over on the side border near the fruit trees that were planted, the apple trees, the plum trees, and they came up and looked so regal. I love the color. I love the fact that they were standing so strong and tall, and each time it just became more beautiful and more beautiful, the color was just outstanding. And then they blended very well with the alliums that I had planted later on in the season. The combination of both just filled this area with so much beautiful spring pale color. It was so pleasing to the eye. The front garden tulips opened up with the red and the yellow. First the red, and then we had the daffodils coming out too, and then I started to see the yellow. And at this particular time, because these were late blooming tulips, I was able to put in my pepper, hot pepper starts. So it helped to fill the area and it was looking so pretty and kind of symbolic having those red tulips with the red hot peppers. On the other side too, the red tulips showed up and these tulips have been here for a while. But I really enjoyed these beautiful white tulips because they showed up. And then the yellow tulips started to take over. The red tulips faded and the yellow tulips were the last of it. And it was a beautiful display. So I'm really looking forward to spring 2020. And I know that I've planted a lot of different bulbs, some new, some old, uh, some alliums, some hyacinths, some um, gladiator 
alliums here, as well as fresh tulips in different parts of the garden. And I am really looking forward to spring. I planted these bulbs and some other tulips, so it will be interesting to see exactly what the garden will look like this spring coming for 2020. I know that some of the bulbs will return from the past years, but some of these new bulbs will definitely take their place and they will um, fill out the border. And I wasn't able to place tulips all over the garden because the garden is so big it just swallows up these tulips. But I know that it's going to be colorful and it's going to be attractive because of these new additions with the alliums, especially these global alliums, the hyacinths and the drumstick alliums. So I'm excited for spring and I'm looking forward to a lot of spring color. Well, if you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below. Have you put in your bulbs yet? And if so, um, are you looking forward to spring? I hope so. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And thank you so much because you are wonderful. You are special. You are God's great garden. And see you next time in Catherine's garden. Don't forget to subscribe now and hit the notification button for more videos to come. Thank you for spending your time with me here in Catherine's garden, in my urban cottage garden. Bye. This is a production of Lady Wisdom Speaks 2019.